Growing up in Sacramento was just like watching the Brady Bunch. All the stereotypes that you expect of suburbia is what we had, except at least our neighborhood of Sacramento was one of the more diverse ones. Probably about a third of the neighborhood was also Asian, so we didn't feel completely isolated. It was the 1970s. It was the time where everybody is coming into themselves as a country. We're dealing with multiculturalism. Thanksgiving dinners, it was normal to have turkey with fried rice. My parents and their parents really believe in the greatness of America. They're very proud to be Americans. They vote in every election, and my dad drove me to the precinct to cast my first ballot. I have yet to tell him that I voted Democrat, though, but I think he's figured out that I'm not a Republican. He probably blames it on my Berkeley experience. He loves the American dream so much, he doesn't even own a passport. All of our trips are within driving distance. I don't even know if he's ever been on a plane. This is the world famous photographer shooting world famous kids. We drove everywhere. We drove to Disney World, we drove to Niagara Falls, we drove to Washington DC. And as cool as that is, 3,000 miles a trip, it can be quite a challenge. We ended up going to 46 out of the 50 states. It was also great to see different people across the country and eat the different food that America has to offer. But for some reason, my mom always still wanted to eat Chinese food. And my dad basically had a rule that there had to be a Chinatown in the area or we weren't going. But one time he finally broke down and in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, we ate at the only Chinese restaurant in the 100 miles. Our server ended up being a white woman wearing a black wig and a Japanese kimono. And that should have given us a clue that something was awry. Our chow mein dish ended up being fried wonton strips with some sauce on the side. And to this day, I have no idea what it was. I think it was great that we got to experience history. That's a huge goal of my parents vision when we took these vacations. It's throwing in some fun but also experiencing history as it is so that you can it's tangible, you can touch it, you can smell it, you can see it instead of just reading it in a book and hopefully that helps you remember it and, and just really understand how big and vast and great this country is. Going on these trips was probably the only time me and my sister got along. We fought all the time, but the chance to go on vacation, it was great and it's something that we looked forward to. And once we were in the car, if we started fighting, my dad would turn around and yell, you better stop or I'm gonna turn this car around. For our cross country trips, we actually had a van. The back of the van was transformed into a bed. Two out of every three days, we slept in the van at a campsite or a rest area. And then every third day, we could actually have a shower at a hotel, unless we were at the campground, like at Yellowstone. I think my parents really love being in America and being Americans. My mom, she came over from the Philippines, so she recognized the benefits of being in this country and everything that my grandfather believed in when he fought for the Americans. They believe it, take it to heart. They built a life from nothing. They're very proud of all the work and effort it took to become citizens and for my grandparents to provide this life for them. I think my family was living the American dream. The fact that we could actually drive across the country is something that fulfilled my dad's wishes and that was like his way of being part of America. To me, the American dream is the equal opportunity to achieve a great life. No matter what social class you were born in, as long as you work hard, you'll be able to have a good life for yourself and a better life for your children. <laughs>